Hello, I'm Sean D. McMillan, and this is Best Class Ever. Today, we are going to continue to learn about how to get really good, really fast, really quickly. And today's strategy is how to harness the power of shape language. Remember how ingeniously I explained that Mickey Mouse was designed with three circles within three circles within three circles? like the fractal geometry that we often find in the patterns of nature. So let's take a look at some more character designs and see how we can use common base shapes like squares, circles, and triangles to both bring out the character in our art and as a powerful design strategy that can be combined with other techniques which we will learn later on. Here you have four hens all basically drawn exactly the same way. The only difference is that each uses a different base shape, which actually gives each one a totally different character. Now let's revisit Disney Animation to take a look at the work of some of the best character designers in the world. Now if we look at the original animated Aladdin by Disney Films, this is what we call a character lineup. It's a simple way to compare all of the characters to each other and see how the differences in their design reflect the differences in their character. But visually speaking, the biggest difference is their base shape. It's every bit as important as what clothes they wear, what kind of facial features they might have, or what color is used to depict them. If anything, the base shape is critical because it gives each character a truly unique silhouette, making them instantly recognizable no matter how big or how small they are on the screen. A good, clear, easily readable silhouette is another critical aspect of character design and is itself one of the most powerful tools in visual storytelling. Now let's take a look at the adorable design of Disney Pixar Brave's Baby Bears. Aww. There is something really charmingly simple about their design that makes them really appealing. But looking at their design, you can see that there is clearly a very simple set of shapes that if you find them, makes it very easy to draw them. Again, here is a charming lineup of characters from Disney Pixar's film, Brave. See how each character has its own unique base shape reflecting the differences of character between their different tribes? Even if we look at their feet, they're designed using polar opposite shapes. But the greatest dualistic example of character design is definitely from Disney Pixar's film, Up. Here we have a fantastic example of contrasting base shapes. Good old classic box versus sphere. Russell is radiating roundness, while Carl is a boxed in old man. Neither of these characters is really the protagonist or the antagonist, but their contrasting ways of approaching life are the foundation of the story, and a lot of the conflict does stem from their contrast. Now, I once asked my high school art students to, you know, ask me to draw anything, and of course, like all high schoolers, they love the Avengers. As a matter of fact, one of the girls in the class had a crush on Chris Hemsworth, who plays Thor. So of course, they asked me to draw Thor. Now, some might say that with this gray haircut, I actually look a little bit like Chris Hemsworth, or I don't know, perhaps even Chris Pratt. Actually, people tell me I look like Superman, but Superman is lame. Anyways, so they asked me to draw Thor. So we brought up this image from the internet, and I attempted to draw it, but it just ended up going really badly. And I was doing this in front of the whole class. So it was actually quite embarrassing. But you know, what happened was I made exactly the mistakes that I mentioned in the previous lesson. I just started drawing without a strategy and I hadn't really looked at and analyzed the image to find any interesting shapes. So I threw the drawing away and I started over again from scratch. But this time I actually stared at the image, found a common shape, that's, com that's placed within different parts of the image. And I use that as a strategy to help me draw this image of Thor. And combined with some other techniques, which I'll teach later on, called straight against the curve and contraposto, I was able to really execute a nice, simple version of this very complex photograph. So you can see here how I use triangles as a way to break into this complicated image. And since we're on the subject of superheroes, for our last example, let's look at one of the most archetypal arch nemesis in all of film, Darth Vader. Ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. 
in this poem by John Donne, he uses the bell that was used to signify time throughout the village as a metaphor for death. Back in the days of agriculture, not everybody had a clock or a watch on hand. The way that they knew time was the church would ring an ominous bell throughout the city. And there is that moment in all of our lives that we are all waiting for. Darth Vader is the physical manifestation of death. And although we do see some triangles in his design, like you often see in many villains, his base shape is more like, you guessed it, a bell. When this guy shows up, you know the hour of judgment has arrived. His face is also scary because his bugged out eyes and inhuman black plastic gives you the same grotesque feeling you get from a horsefly. Is this design intentional? I think so. Animals in nature can be a great source of inspiration. In science and engineering, we call it biomimicry, learning how things work in nature and adapting it to technology. Nearly every book on drawing will show how characters are often designed to take after certain animals. For example, if you add perfectly round glasses to your character, it's an easy way to make your character look more smart, perceptive, and mysterious like an owl. Shapes themselves almost seem to take on a character of their own. Circles, by their very nature, have no sharp corners. They're radiant, and they can make your characters very approachable. They can be loosely drawn and very flexible. These are the shapes that appeal to and remind us of children. Triangles are very different from circles. They are sharp, pointed, and they can create a feeling of danger. They are often seen in antagonists and villains with a dangerous, driving, nefarious purpose. They can make a character look dangerously intelligent or clever. Squares are reliable, measured, and consciously constructed. They're great for designing solid, reliable characters with a strong foundation. Now, when we actually look at the world, we don't actually see lines. We see edges, or, you know, where two shapes meet, but we don't actually see lines. Lines and shapes are the simplest, fastest tool in your toolkit to help you draw complex images in a simple way. But to harness their power, we need to realize their potential for storytelling to bring out the character of our art. And so when you're designing characters or environments or trying to capture the essence of something, using conflicting, contrasting shapes is a great way to bring the audience's eyes to that special part of the image. Your audience's eye will always go to the part of your drawing that has the most contrast. Just as the protagonist is fighting against the philosophy of the antagonist, your characters can have a shape that is conflicting with someone else's shape. Contrast is itself one of the key principles of design, all of which we will present at a later lesson, and all of which can be combined with all of your other techniques to create powerful combinations and interesting designs. Shapes and lines will always be the foundation upon which you build your church. And later on, with the principles of design, I will give you the keys to the kingdom, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So now it's time to put these drawing principles into practice. Let's start with something fun and easy. Let's start with Braves Bears. For our second drawing practice, we're gonna try something a little more challenging. I want you guys to actually design or to draw a set of characters from one film. So you're gonna draw three or more characters simultaneously. Not in detail, I want you to stick to just the most common base shapes, okay? And try to bring out some contrast between the different characters. You can draw the base shape for one, and then the base shape for the second one, and then the base shape for the third one and or fourth one and then go in and add some smaller shapes to each and do a phase where you add a little bit of necessary details to each. So you're simultaneously building up all three or four characters. And again, you never have to go in great detail because it will take you some time to draw more than one character at a time. But see if you can see really find the shape differences and the contrasting characters, contrasting shapes between the different characters. 